Reptiles make amazing pets and do really well in captivity, but there are some reptiles that deserve to be left in the wild forever. So today, let's talk about the top five reptiles that should remain in the wild and do the worst in captivity. My name's Adam, this is Diamond, you're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. I think that a lot of reptiles, most reptiles, do really well in captivity if they're taken care of properly. But what about the ones that no matter what you do, just aren't going to be happy being captive? Today, that's what we're gonna talk about. Now, of course, we're talking about for keepers who have private collections, there are exceptions in zoos sometimes, but let's just start off with the list. Number five, sea snakes. Now, all sea snakes live in the sea basically, right? There's 69 species. They're split to keep it really simple into true sea snakes, which spend all of their time in the water. And then there are crates, sea crates, which spend some of their time on land. In fact, some of the sea snakes will give birth to live babies in the sea. They literally never leave the sea ever. Well, almost never. Sometimes if you really need to to find water, but that's a different thing all the way around. And if you're wondering, well, how do sea snakes drink water then if they're in salt water all the time and they can't drink salt water. Well, sea snakes, they drink the water from rain that sits on the top of the ocean. That's how they do it. And then sometimes, especially with crates, they'll go up in little pockets where they'll collect fresh water for themselves. Now, of course, sea snakes are highly venomous, so they're terrible pets for most people. They have a very specialized diet. They need tons and tons of space. These are animals that do not do well in captivity and most of them don't breed well in captivity either. And that's gonna be a common trend. If an animal can't breed in captivity, why the heck are we keeping it in captivity, especially if it's endangered? Not saying all sea snakes are endangered, they're not. But if we're talking about the top echelon, we're talking about aquariums and places that are government funded to keep these animals that are so specialized, why would we keep them if it's not for education in a very tiny amount, if it's not for a breeding effort also? Because if we're keeping them for education and you always wanna have one, well, what happens when that animal dies? But you gotta go get another one from the wild. So it's in my opinion that we should always be breeding these animals if for nothing else but stock to keep in these educational environments. I'm not saying overbreed them. I'm not saying bring them into private collections, especially with sea snakes, because most people don't have a giant wall-to-wall -wall aquarium in their house that's gonna be able to give them the fresh water in the way that they need, the perfect temperature, humidity. These guys have a very specialized diet. So uh, did I say humidity? They live in the water. You guys know what I'm talking about. Oh yes, there are some sea snakes. I think it's the yellow-lipped uh, sea crate that actually goes on land to lay eggs. So they're not all the same, but either way, I just think that it's really fun to watch these guys swim around in the ocean in documentaries, but don't keep them as a pet. Number four, an obvious entry, Komodo dragons. Komodo dragons are not dragons, they're monitor lizards. It's actually the largest monitor lizard on the planet. These things oftentimes, well, they're 150 pounds plus if they're a healthy adult. Sometimes, well, there's one example that was 300 pounds. So these are giant monitor lizards. These lizards are bigger than some humans. And of course they wouldn't eat a human likely. I mean, if they could, they probably would, but they mostly prey on bigger animals like deer or pigs or things like that. And what they do is because they are, although venomous, which a lot of people tend not to know, they do have venom in their mouths. They also have tons of disgusting bacteria. Well, not disgusting, like it's disgusting for you and I. But basically what they do is they chomp on whatever it is they're trying to eat. They follow it around for a few days as the infection sets in and it slowly dies and then when it barely has enough life but it's still conscious they start ripping pieces off of this animal yep it's a terrible way to go don't get bit by a komodo dragon now there are some in zoos and there are some breeding efforts that have been well established and working but a lot of the time it's very difficult to breed komodo dragons so if you're gonna have komodo dragons and not breed them especially an endangered animal like this what's the point I mean, education, sure, I understand that, but at the same time, I do believe that if there's no breeding effort in place, maybe you shouldn't be keeping them in the first place because once it goes, well, how are you gonna get another one, right? And not only that, but these are endangered species, so we definitely should not be poaching them out of the wild 
which is something that still happens illegally. Poaching is illegal, right? But these are majestic, beautiful creatures that deserve all the respect in the world. And of course, if you want to see one, there are zoos out there, but keeping one in captivity, you just don't have enough space. They need tons and tons and tons and tons of space to be happy. They're difficult to breed. They, they don't do well together a lot of the time. Komodo dragons are not for private keepers. Number three, sea turtles. Now I know what you're thinking, I've been to an aquarium and I've seen sea turtles. Sure, now there are seven species of sea turtles. There's smaller ones and then there's gigantic ones. The thing is, a lot of them, although can be bred in captivity, they're a little bit more difficult. And the majority of breeding efforts are kind of in farms. So they're in the ocean, just kind of cordoned off with rope or net or, I don't know, like the scientific, not scientific, but trade term for how they're, basically they're in the ocean, okay? Keeping them in aquariums you can do, but it's difficult. They need tons and tons of space. Again, no private person, I mean, maybe some billionaire who has a staff would be able to do it, but, Everybody watching this video can't afford to keep a sea turtle happy and healthy in the way that it should be kept. Just in general, sea turtles are not made for private collections. They're great for, you know, farms and things like that where we're trying to bolster the population. But of course, they're really interesting all the way around. A lot of species of sea turtle, they'll come on land to lay their eggs. They'll come high enough up that the tide will not wash them away because the eggs will not survive if they're submersed in water of any kind, especially salt water. And then once it's time to hatch, they all come out the same day and then they make a mad dash to the beach. We've all seen the documentaries, right? And then the crabs eat them and the seagulls and it's just difficult for them to get back into the water. And there are things that are killing off sea turtles. No, plastic straws are not killing off sea turtles. I know we've all seen the picture, the video, whatever it was, and we banned plastic straws because of it. Plastic straws are not killing sea turtles, okay? I promise you, give us our plastic straws back for crying out loud. I can't even drink an iced coffee without it just turning to pulp. Anyway, the point being, sea turtles, there's a lot of things going on. Poaching, hunting, which is illegal in almost every country for them, by the way. No, uh, sea turtle soup is not gonna make your uh -uh work any better. I know that Chinese medicine would dictate that. It's not a thing that's gonna work for you. Just leave them alone. They might be tasty, who knows, but I promise you there's things just as tasty that aren't completely endangered and you're destroying a population by eating them. It's really cool too because you can see them basically everywhere. They're in every ocean around the world except for the Arctic Ocean. They go as far north as, I mean, Newfoundland, which is really far north by the way. That's like kind of the area where the Titanic sunk. Like we're talking about there's icebergs and these guys are floating around, some species. Now you'll find them mostly in warmer waters, but if you want to see one, go to an aquarium or go turtle watching, which is a thing by the way, like whale watching. That's what I would recommend. Don't go buy a baby sea turtle on the black market. You're gonna kill it, I promise you. Don't do that. Number two, one you wouldn't expect, coral snakes. Now, coral snakes, I'm talking about new world coral snakes and there's a bunch of different species, but a lot of them do really poorly in captivity. Really poorly. There's really not much to say about this. If you're not gonna be able to breed something in captivity and keep it healthy and happy in captivity, and when I say breed, I don't mean individually every single person. I just mean as a whole, there has to be a breeding effort for anything we keep in captivity so that we can keep it in captivity without taking more to the wild. Coral snakes, I mean, it's North America is a lapid, so it's a venomous snake. Most species probably won't kill you. In fact, I don't think there's been a recorded death since 1996, and this person chose not to take the antivenin, which you can do, by the way, if you choose to. So it's an animal that probably won't kill you, but it's gonna ruin your day. So coral snakes just bad pets in general, and they don't do well in captivity, so why keep something you're probably gonna kill? It just doesn't make any sense. Number one, marine iguanas. The coolest lizard on the planet, besides the Fiji banded iguanas, which are, Super duper cool. If you've never seen a Fiji banded iguana, like, come on. Marine iguanas, well, there's a couple subspecies, but anyway, or a few subspecies, I should say, come from the Galapagos Islands, which are way off the coast of Ecuador. So it's technically owned by Ecuador. You cannot export these animals anymore. There are very few in captivity, and the ones that you do see oftentimes when a video pops up here and there are illegally obtained. Because yes, of course, they're poached out of the wild, which is terrible, you should never do that, and I don't think anyone watching this video is doing that, but you shouldn't. They're very specialized, okay? These are the only marine inhabitant, or the animal, I guess, lizard, that is still alive, that is not extinct, that spends time in marine environments, okay? So they're gonna stay by the ocean, and they're gonna dive deep down where they're gonna get their food, which is a very specialized diet. They're gonna eat marine algae. That's basically what they eat. And they're gonna dive deep enough down that it's gonna be too cold for them to be down there for too long. If they're down there for too long, 
your bodies don't work properly because they are ectotherms, just like basically every other lizard in the world. So then they have to come back up, sit on the rocks, get warm again, basically that's it. Now these are really cool lizards too because they look super cool. There are uh, land iguanas from the Galapagos Islands which they do interbreed naturally. But either way, they need big space, they need specialized diet, they need that salt water also. They get a lot of sodium from that. You just can't keep them in captivity. So, and even the captive breeding uh, efforts in captivity, captive breeding efforts in captivity, you know what I'm saying, don't work that well. So we should just leave them where they are. Watch them in documentaries, watch them, you know, take pictures, look at pictures, I should say. Don't, I mean, you can take pictures if you go to the Galapagos. But either way, these are not for captivity. And I've seen pictures I don't know how these people got them, but keeping them in like 40 gallon terrariums, they're way too big. I don't know how they got them. I don't know. It must've been very costly and you're keeping it like that. You just can't keep these guys properly because they need such specialized environment that's almost impossible to recreate in captivity. So that's it. What do you think are some animals that are terrible to keep in captivity should be left in the wild? Let me know in the comment section below. Please, as always, hit like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. And as always, a special thanks to the Patreon supporters. You guys are freaking amazing. Thank you for all you do. You guys, so many things. You get discounts on merch, videos early, you know about travel plans that are coming up, all that and more for as little as $1 a month. And that's it. Because I do videos on Mondays and Thursdays, that means I'll see you in the next one.